Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto website developer. And in this first video tutorial on MySQL, I want to show you how we can create a database and create a user and set the permissions for that user to use that specific database. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto website developer.com. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them, as well as my book, White Hat Hacker. Um, each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all of the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20 but do want to help out, please just leave a comment or a thumbs up on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. I do track all the analytics and it helps to promote these video tutorials to other YouTube users. So that said, why don't we take a look at um, our dev environment? So I'm going to be using uh, Unix for this video tutorial series. Uh, and to do that, I'm just running Oracle uh, VirtualBox. And you can see I logged in here to MySQL and I was checking things out. Um, I didn't start with how to set up MySQL because I figure there are lots of tutorials out there already. Uh, I do have a video tutorial series on getting Drupal set up and running on AWS. And so that shows you how to do um, uh, MySQL installation. So you can always just use that. Um, so that said, I'm going to connect to MySQL, which is running local here. Um, and I just do that with the command MySQL dash U to tell it I'm, I'm passing in a username. Uh, so it's space root and then I'm passing in dash P. And the reason why I use dash P is because I'm going to type in my password. That's the secure way of doing this so that it doesn't show up in your history of commands. So I'm going to hit dash P and I'm going to enter my, my password here. And you'll see now I'm on a MySQL command line. And I can do a whole bunch of stuff here. I can look at the databases that already exist. So just show databases and there's what I've got. So I want to create a new one for this video tutorial series. So I do that with the command create database and let's call this uh, MySQL, just call it tooth. So there we go, create the database. So now that I've got that, what I want to do is want to create a user who can then perform actions on this database. And to do that, I should have kept this open. Um, I apologize. We're just going to do a quick Google search here for create user MySQL. And the reason why we do that is because I want to show you the actual reference manual. There's a ton of stuff here. Uh, so you'll know over, uh, notice the URL here. We're over at MySQL uh, reference. And here's all the stuff that you can do when you create a user. Uh, we're not going to do half of this, and I don't think you normally will. Uh, you'll typically end up using just this, um, this guy here. Uh, and you can set the password to expire. You don't have to. Uh, but this is what we'll be doing. We'll be creating a user at localhost, and we'll be identifying it by a specific password. Um, now, quick thing to note here, you'll see that I'll be using localhost. If you're using a remote uh, database, so you're using, say, AWS RDS, um, I believe you typically end up passing in the um, uh, percent symbol here, if not the actual host itself. Um, no, I could be lying to you. Um, anyways, the reason why I'm flagging is because localhost and percent sign are very different. Uh, the localhost actually refers to the localhost and doesn't use a socket. The percent sign will cover every address uh, except for localhost. Uh, so again, I can't remember when you're using AWS which one you use. I think it's the percent sign um, because I've run into that a couple of times. Uh, so I flagged that here. With that said, let's go ahead and create user. Um, I always forget the syntax. So let's create user. We're going to put this into quotes. We'll just call this uh, uh, MySQL user at, and then we'll just put password. We don't care. Oops, no, sorry, this is localhost identified by password. I think that's it. So there we go. We've created our user. Now, what we need to do is actually grant the permissions for that user. So, again, looking at the reference manual here, you can see that there's the grant function. Um, and this is how you can define um, permissions. So you can see that you can actually add them to every single database. You can add them to every single database and every single table, a database specifically in a table, um, routines, a whole bunch of things. So there's a whole um, whack of different things that you can do here. Um, typically when you're creating a user, I guess in most cases, um, unless you're doing something super complex, you're just going to create the user. You're going to grant them permissions to a database and allow them to do uh, whatever it is you want. If you just want selects, you can just do selects. Uh, typically, I I've seen it's usually grant all on a specific database. So that's what we're going to do. So here, I'm just going to go grant all. Oh man, I just keep forgetting permissions. So grant all on 
And then we call their database MySQL dot star. So all of the tables for that specific database to and then our user. So this is MySQL user at local host. And then last thing you want to do is flush privileges. So that just tells MySQL to refresh the permissions. So now we're going to exit and we can go ahead and now connect with dash u my SQL user dash p. And I'll show you here. I'll just actually pass in password to show you what happens. So we're now connected. And if we look at show databases, you can see I only see MySQL tutorials and then information schema. Whereas before when we were logged in as root, we could see all of these different ones. Um, and just before we sign off, if we look at history of my commands, uh, you can see a whole bunch of other stuff I was doing for the tutorials. But here, most notably, 1594, you can see the actual password. Whereas when I logged in as root, you don't see the password. So that's why you typically do not do this. Always pass in dash P and then type in the password yourself or set up some other um, command to have that done for you. Um, but that's it for this video tutorial. I just wanted to show you how we create a database, create a user. Now in the next video tutorial, we'll go ahead and we'll start setting up the tables to do that and we'll look at cred functionality. So again, hopefully this video tutorial helps you. If it does, please leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. Um, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much for watching.